Okay, good morning. Welcome once again to the Network Breakfast. This is Tom Basie. We're in Northeast Ohio. And today we're going to be talking about solar energy. You should keep up on this stuff. This is important. And uh, we have our two uh, major, major guests here, Roger Sykes and Tristan Rader. No pressure, right? No pressure. But but first, we're going to say good morning, and we're going to leave it to them when we're done saying good morning to you out there in YouTube land. So uh, as we say, uh, oh, there goes Mike. All right. Well, we'll wait for him to come back. All right. We're going to start with Scott Morrison, our master photographer. He's going to say good morning, and then we'll pass it on. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Good morning, Scott Morrison. Good morning, everybody. As you've heard, my name is Scott Morrison, Company's Discovery Photo. I am a full-time, full-service photographer, have been since 1991. Um, we also do cinematography. This weekend, we shot a music video for an internationally known rock band. So that was kind of fun. Had lots of uh, weddings this weekend, and it was a really busy weekend. So if you need you know, business headshots, you need a family photo, even pictures with you and your dogs. Call me, Scott Morrison, Discovery Photo, when image counts. Excellent. Thank you, Scott. And thanks for being here. We're going to say good morning to Jeff Hexter. Good morning, Jeff. Thank you, Tom. I am Jeff Hexter with Always Keep Computing. I save professionals working from home time, money, and frustration with their technology. I like to say the word of the day is defenestration. Who do you know that wants to throw their Windows laptop out the window? I'd love to catch it and help make it run better. Jeff Hexter, always keep computing. We pull out our hair so you don't have to. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff said Jack's Deli, Wednesday, 9 to 11, a landmark restaurant. So catch them if you can. Bring your phone, your laptop, uh, your uh, your cameras, anything. He'll look at everything and he'll fix it probably. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Good morning, uh, our window, door, and glass block man. That would be Chris Walters. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Chris Walters with See-Through Windows. I provide vinyl replacement windows, uh, new construction, and glass block. I cover a territory from Port Clinton to the Pennsylvania border, Cleveland to Canton. I go take a look at every house that you call me. Uh, within 24 to 36 hours, you have a quote. Uh, right now, the manufacturers are getting back into uh, pre-COVID form. So we're looking at like six weeks to uh, to order and install. So give me a call, 330-604-0403. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for being here. Now we're going to say, I'm sorry, Mike popped out. He's in and out, in and out. I don't know. How supposed to we, how are we going to ask Mike? Okay, we're going to say good morning to Trina Gigax, uh, and uh, she'll say good morning right now. Thank you, oh. Trina. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Trina. Um, I, when I was started with this group, I was freelance copy editing and writing a bit. I've since retired from that, and I'm a full-time volunteer for cancer patients, um, two different places I volunteer helping people go through their struggle or after. Um, you can call me or sorry, reach me at midbadlady at gmail.com. Excellent. Thank you, Trina. Thanks for being here. And uh, I think we have Mike back, but he's on his phone and the phone is whistling. So let's see. I'm going to unmute. Oh, and now he's gone. Okay, well, you know what? He'll pop back on again, and uh, and uh, Mike works for a reputable uh, insurance company here in Northeast Ohio, and he'll he'll fill us in later on. Okay, but uh, for now, we're going to turn the uh, the screen in our Zoom meeting. We're going to turn it over to uh, Roger Sykes and Tristan Rader. We're happy that they're here. They're going to talk about solar energy and their particular company. And uh, I'm just going to give it to them and they'll talk their heads off and you'll be interested. You'll be entertained and you'll want to watch this to the end. Okay, men, Roger, Tristan, take it over. Thanks. Tom. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for um, inviting us to your breakfast this morning, your virtual breakfast. It's, Absolutely. It's an honor thank here. you, Tristan. And, and uh, I'll thank you. I'll tell you a little bit about um, Solar United Neighbors, who we are as an organization, kind of what we do to give you kind of a, uh, a context for, for this community solar work we'll talk about. And then I'll turn it over to Roger and I'll start the presentation at that point. 
Um, and Roger will, will take it away and talk about our policy work. So Solar United Neighbors started back in 2009 in Washington, D.C., uh, and we were a, a group that was born of uh, a need for people in, in the community to figure out how to go solar. So back in 2007 to 2009, um, our executive director went around and tried to figure out how to put solar panels on her roof in Washington, D.C. It was very hard. Um, so she got 30, 40 of her neighbors together, and they went to a city council meeting, and they lobbied, and they changed the rules in their community, and then they ended up all going solar at the same time together in what was called the, uh, what they ended up calling a solar cooperative. Um, they took that model into every ward in D.C., and then just about 15 now states in the country and, and, and Puerto Rico. We run what's called solar cooperatives where people can join that group and they can add solars to their roof and save a couple bucks while they do it. Um, so we're a nonprofit. Our whole goal is to um, stay installer neutral, to stay um, business neutral, um, and then help individuals, help the consumer understand the ins and outs, ups and downs of the of the solar world and make it as easy, simple as possible and use a bulk buying type of program, which is what the co-op is. You join you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 of your neighbors um, and you all go into a solar installer and say, hey, give us your best deal. Um, you're usually able to save between 10 and 20% over under market rate. So that's a lot of what we do. Um, that's our bread and butter. You know, We're all about putting solar on roofs and helping people navigate this um, uh, this crazy world. Uh, and it's, we're in a fortunate position right now where we have lots of um, federal incentives and things that can help pay for solar too. So um, we're there to educate folks about what um, mechanisms might help them go solar, whether it's loans uh, or, or the investment tax credit, which pays for 30% of a solar array. Uh, on top of all of that, we do um, lots of policy work. We have a C4 uh, we're in Columbus, and right now we're working on a very cool thing uh, that will be introduced here very shortly, which is the Community Solar Bill, and that's what we're going to be talking about today mostly. So with that, I'll start the presentation, and I'll turn it over to uh, Roger. Awesome. Thanks, Tristan, and, and hi, y'all. Yeah, I'm, I'm Roger Sykes. Um, I, I'm based in uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, shoot, a little bit about me. I'm, I'm the policy and advocacy uh uh, person for Soul United Neighbors, and, and I work across the Midwest, um, but we certainly have a focus in Ohio now, um, in part because of this bill, but also because Ohio is a, a big old state with, with a lot of folks who want to go solar. Um, let's, uh, yeah, so, oh, oh and yeah, so we, we met Ray, so Ray was on, we had a, a community solar town hall meeting, kind of a, a big kickoff meeting last week where we're really trying to build kind of momentum and excitement around this statewide bill. And Ray hopped on that, um, that call last week. So that's where we met. And Ray, you know, told us about this breakfast and about y'all. And so that's, that's how we find ourselves here today. So, you know, thanks for having us. And, and what a cool crew y'all have from, from all different walks of life. It's very cool talking about um, interesting things. So, um, so yes, let's, let's dive in here. Uh, and thank you, Jeff. I see that LinkedIn. So, so, um, so community solar. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, what what is community solar? And, and Tristan shared kind of our bread and butter. I'm going to talk about this this specific bill. Um, so, essentially, um, in, in Ohio right now, the, the way in which residents can can get access to solar energy is that you got to put the panels up on your roof, up on the roof that you own. Um, and then you you can you you can own those panels um, and and get the benefits of that sol solar energy from um, from the panels on your roof. Now that is wonderful. I have panels myself, and I went through a co-op to get there. However, um, as y'all probably already have a sense of, you know, solar panels they can be somewhat expensive, um, and uh, there can be barriers for folks, you know, getting those panels on their own roof. Um, in addition, you know, people may rent their homes and they might not have their own roofs, you know, to put panels up there. Um, so this notion of, of community solar, essentially what it means is that um, we can put up solar arrays uh, throughout different parts of the state. So, for example, these solar arrays, they could be put on a church roof. They could be put on an abandoned landfill or a brownfield site. Or a rural landowner, you know, might want to dedicate part of his or part of her um, farmland um, to a solar array. And community solar would then allow any resident in Ohio to buy into that solar energy from that array. 
So, so essentially, if, if community solar is enabled, it would really open up access to, to solar energy um, to residents across the state. And, and again, particularly for families that can't afford their own array, maybe they got trees around their roof, for whatever reason they can't get on their roof, community solar would really open up access broadly um, across Ohio. Uh, ne next slide. Um, I just wanted to kind of paint a picture a little bit, y'all. We've got a couple examples here. So th this is a, this is an example out of um, out of DC, um, and essentially uh, th th there's this church here, Sergeant Memorial uh, Presbyterian Church, um, and they they have a community solar array on their roof and then also on their adjacent uh, property. Um, and essentially, it, it's, so it's a about a 256 kilowatt system, um, and with this size system, about uh, 73 families are able to buy into this solar energy. A number of the folks, you know, actually go to the church, but others are, are just community members around the church. Um, about 73 families are, are buying into the solar energy from this church, and they're, they're saving money on their electric bills. Um, and next slide. Here's just another example. Um, there's a yeah, community solar project, and this was developed um, on that housetop of the New York City Housing Authority. Um, so on, on the public public housing uh, complex, and this particular array provides energy to about 350 families. And this one, it's it's generally for uh, lower income families that can buy into this solar array. Next slide. Let's see. Yeah, so this is over in uh, Canton. Uh, Massachusetts, uh, this particular rooftop installation, it, it's about 847 kilowatts of power. So this one's uh, uh, notably bigger. Um, and yeah, it's just, yeah, it gives some of the numbers that will return about a million dollars in savings to area residents um, over, over its 20 year lifespan. Um, next slide. And then, yeah, this is just kind of a, a diagram, again, to, to paint a picture. Um, so, you know, again, we've got a community solar project. And again, this, so this could be, if it, again, picture a farmer out in, you know, rural Ohio, um, and, and they want to dedicate, you know, 30 acres of their land to a community solar project. They can work with a developer to, to lay out all those panels. Um, and then if, you know, this, if community solar legislation is passed, then their neighbors or people across the state could actually, you know, buy buy into that uh, solar energy. Um, it, it it would still go through, you know, the utility company, so First Energy or, or any of the other three utility companies in Ohio. Um, they would end up getting bill credits, and then ultimately, um, Community Solar would, would save would save money for the members who who subscribe into those into those panels. Can I interject something here, Roger? Yeah. Just, uh, two things. If anybody has any questions, feel free to like stop us uh, and ask questions. Some of this stuff, you know, can you can get a lot really quick, uh, especially if you're not familiar with energy or solar or this kind of stuff. But feel free to just pa you know pause us and ask questions. It'll probably help benefit everybody. I have um, one. I have a yeah, question. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, go ahead. This seems like you can buy into it even if you're not wired into the solar panels. That's Is exactly. that true? Yeah. So what, what we're going to get into next will be sort of the ownership model behind solar. And there's many different types of ownership, first off. Um, and there's also different types of subscription models. So who buys your energy? Um, just like you're a business, you know, you can choose who buy who buys and from you, who's your who purchases your product. You, you know, we can choose who subscribes. So most community solar projects are owned by investors, they're owned by the utility, or they're owned by businesses. Um, there's also a model where those solar arrays are owned by individuals, cooperatives, people that come together, um, pull their money and buy the solar array. That's called community-owned community solar. So that's what Roger's talking about now. But yes, in any case, no matter who owns the community solar project, um, the subscription models are generally pretty open to where anybody can buy some of that solar energy and it shows up as a credit on your bill. Um, and you pay a lower dollar per kilowatt amount for that solar energy than you would generally pay for um, energy generated in other ways, like your standard service offer, whatever you're paying now. So that's all. That's all I wanted to say. And yeah, great question. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Yeah. And then 
And then along those lines, Tom, so currently in Ohio, the way that legislation is set up is that um, for, to get solar energy, the, the, the panels, they have to be on your own roof. And so what we're talking about now is, is um, adopting legislation that would essentially open up solar so that it doesn't have to be on your own roof and you can draw it from anywhere. So that's kind of the crux, you know, what, I guess one of the key pieces of, of this community solar legislation. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. So next, the next slide, Tristan. And Tristan, please, you know, please jump in, you know, whenever you got more context and, you know, feel free to dive in. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, essentially how, how do residents benefit uh, from community owned solar? Yeah. The big thing is that, yeah, residents don't have to foot the upfront costs of, of the solar panel infrastructure. And um, what we've largely seen across the country is that residents save, save money on their bills. You know, we'll see anything from like 10 to 20 percent um, is about what we're seeing nationally. Um, and community solar has passed in uh, 22 states across the country already. So it is kind of a, you know, we have, we have a sense uh, of, of the, the benefits, the economic benefits of it. Um, next slide, Tristan. Let's see. Yeah. So I just, um, yeah. And just before we get into the community solar bill launch overview, I did want to highlight um, in Ohio something that that's that's somewhat notable in Ohio is the the number of uh, manufacturing companies that relate to the solar industry, and then also the number of solar installers. Um, so so you know when we think of solar manufacturing, of course we have companies that. Um, that, that manufacture the actual panels themselves, such as First Solar. It's a big old company uh, based in, in Toledo. Um, but then in addition, we have companies um, that, that do like solar racking or manufacture racking for solar panels. And there, there's a, a company called APA Solar Racking. And I'll, I'll throw up a link in the chat. Um, and, and that company is also based uh, kind of near, near Toledo, again, in Northwest Ohio. Um, but these, these local kind of Ohio manufacturers, you know, they would relate to this community solar legislation, you know, and so if we can pass, you know, a bill that's going to expand solar, um, the, the local manufacturers here would certainly benefit, um, you know, more jobs would be created and, and there'd just be more, more energy around, around these businesses. All right, next, uh, next slide. So, yeah, so so in Ohio, um, the kind of the big exciting thing is that the, so there's a community solar bill that is is set to be introduced very soon, um, and it, you know it's, it's a statewide bill, and um, it's being it's being launched. There, there's two uh, Republican sponsors, um, Representative Hoops and Representative Ray, uh, who are introducing this legislation. Um, and it's kind of uh, what's cool about it is there, there's really a coalition around this bill that's being introduced. Um, you have our organization, Solar United Neighbors. What we're helping to do is kind of spread the word and really help working families across the state understand what community solar is, how it will relate to their lives and their neighborhoods. And also, you know, if, if you're a landowner, how you can really benefit from owning the panels or renting out your land for the panels. Um, in addition, we have the um, Coalition for Community Solar Access, CCSA. So CCSA is a trade association. They, they represent um, solar installers across the country. Um, and so they're helping to build momentum around this bill and again, really build a big, broad um, coalition around the bill. Um, as I mentioned, there's, uh, there's 22 states across the country that have already passed um, community solar. And there's kind of maybe four main components. You need the, the enabling policy. Um, you need um, access to the electric grid. Um, you need access to bills. And then um, you also have program development and oversight by the Public Utility Commission of Ohio. That's the PUCO. And those are kind of the four components of the legislation that's needed to really make community solar uh, possible in, in Ohio. Tristan, I don't know if you have anything you want to add, add to that. No, I mean, just to sort of, you know, recap that you know, right now you can add solar to your home. You can put solar on your on the field next to your house if you want to. Um, but the Ohio law doesn't allow you to put the solar array anywhere else, you know, than that. You can't have a solar array across town and get a bill credit on your bill. 
um, you know, the utilities don't want you at this moment using their infrastructure to transmit that energy. Uh, and if you did want to, they, you know, you could sign up to be a generator and then do a bulk rate and you could like basically make no money whatsoever. You're, you're giving your solar energy away for free. That's not a very good business model. So what community solar does is it allows for what's called a virtual net metering situation where you're selling that power back to the grid from the community solar array and to your customers, the people that subscribe um, at a pretty high rate at a rate by you know, about what people pay for that power. Um, a little less than, and that's how people are able to save, save money to get that direct credit. But uh, it, it just creates an accounting mechanism. And that's that whole program design and oversight that the bill creates. So uh, it really is great. It'll literally um, more than double the amount of solar in the state of Ohio. Right now we have about what's called one gigawatt or a thousand megawatts of solar deployed. This bill will create space for, and it will certainly be gobbled up at least one, one to two, it's actually capped at 1.75 gigawatts of solar. So it just, it, it really kicks open the door for business, for um, developers to come in and create solar rays. And then folks, businesses, low-income individuals, everybody to um, participate in that and either own or at least subscribe to those solar arrays. So that's the, that's how I would frame it up. Um, I hope, hopefully that's helpful. Any questions on that? Like, do we have a general understanding of of community solar the concept um we could talk a little bit more about the bill oh someone said what you know just said why cap it yeah okay. so it, it is considered a pilot program it's a good question um the 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 idea is first it's ohio so our state legislature isn't exactly um pro clean energy in most cases uh, you know, I'm sure you all are aware of the bribery scandal that happened and, you know, the, the Speaker of the House will likely be going to jail here um, later on in June. So, you know, there, there's a lot and it had to do with energy. Right. And we're, we're, we're just very um, fortunate that we have some Republican leadership that uh, are willing to take this up and champion this uh, in this sort of environment. And I think it had to be a pilot. Uh, in order to get it. And we want to make sure that like it works too. The pilot guarantees savings. So, that we, and so in four years in the pilot, it requires that we study solar in Ohio and then we prove that it's actually saving people money. So actually, I think it's kind of cool. I don't, I don't mind the challenge. I know it does. I have solar on my roof like like Roger and it saves me money. And I'm, I'm you know, we're, we know about these other 22 states and how popular community solar has been in all those other states. So um, that's one of the big reasons why. Good question. Any other questions before we hop into? At this point, we can't do this in Ohio. The only way you do it is is if the the panels are on your house or in your property that's connected yeah. to the house. Exactly. But we're hoping, I think you called it C4. Is um, C4, was that, I, I heard the uh, term C4. Yeah, well, we we are we have a C four. A C four is just a um, a, 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 and we have the ability to uh, do advocacy work. Um, okay. In the state house. All right. I yeah. know it as uh, plastic explosives, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, this is going to be explosives. It's going to be big. Maybe that's what you're getting. Big. Um, it, it, so it, so because of your company, you guys are hoping against hope that this passes in Ohio, so that yeah, and you could implement what you're presenting to us yeah we would this love goes to way help. beyond having solar panels on your roof for yes. sure yeah okay like i said there's 256 so of that one gigawatt that's out there one quarter of that are on rooftops the rest of it is utility owned usually a giant solar arrays that fill up farms and farms and you know giant giant thousands of acres of solar arrays those are great, you know, at least they're putting clean energy on the grid, but those are owned by the utility and they're going to charge you whatever they want for that energy. It doesn't help local businesses. It doesn't help, you know, individuals and communities that want to really just get that direct benefit. This is a way to directly, as directly as possible, benefit from solar without having to have it on your roof and having to pay for it all by yourself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Are you aware of uh, 271 North? I believe it's progressives. They probably yeah, have yeah, five or six okay. acres of mm -hmm. solar panels. That's and a perfect size community solar type of right now they have a big meter right there so they're able to tap into it because it's right on their property right so yeah um those are sold out right and you'll see some of that stuff going on but again that's only because their property is right there yeah uh, and their and their headquarters are right there 
Um, yeah. So yeah, no, that's exactly right. That's exactly the size that you'll start seeing pop up those five or six acre land, like Roger said, landfills, brownfield sites. So sites that the EPA said you can't do much with without serious remediation, they can be capped. You can throw solar on them, old mining sites down in Appalachia area are really excited about this because, you know, there's nothing else they can do with old coal mines that are dead. You can throw on those strip mines, you can throw solar on them and you can sell that energy to businesses around the state. That's kind of their model. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Great questions. Yeah. You know, this, Jeff had a question in the chat. Yeah. Will it save money if the incentives are removed? So yeah, I think the answer is yes, just because what we've seen around the country before there were really a lot of incentives. Um, it's still penciled out pretty well. Uh, with the incentives, it just makes it a no-brainer. Um, you know, there's a 30% tax credit. That's been around a little while. It was it went down to like 24% and community solar projects were still being built. Um, and then it went back up to 30% with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, it certainly makes the, the numbers pencil much better. Um, and those incentives are locked in until um, 20, 2034, 2033, something like that. I mean, most of them have that sort of 10 year, year shelf life. So we really need to get, you know, things built in that window um, while we know what the incentives are so that we can make sure that the power stays cheap for 20 or 30 years. Um, solar panels have a useful life of, of, of around 30, 30 years, 35 years, some of these industrial applications. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to see is a, a higher efficiency rate for each panel. So yeah, that it so, require uh, way less panels to get the same amount of power. It's less land use. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's going that direction. It's kind of slowing down a bit. You know, the average is about 25% efficiency now. It's pretty great between 20 and 25%. Um, and I think the, the cap is like 40. You can't get any more than 40% efficient. But that's a pretty big jump from 25 to 40. So you'll see incremental increases, you know, all the way up to that 40%. Once you get to 40 it just becomes almost impossible to squeeze more energy out of a uh, square meter of, of sunshine. Um, yeah, good question. Okay. Well, good. Uh, so the, the bill is being introduced by Rep Hoops and, and Sharon Ray. Again, we're hoping this week, um, imminent, right? Uh, and then it'll we'll start through the process. And, and part of the reason we're talking to you here and we're having these town hall meetings is we need local businesses, we need individuals, we need people that are passionate about solar or the environment or and then you don't have to be even passionate about the environment you know a little, little asterisk next to our organization is we don't we stay away from environmental arguments although all of us sort of care about sustainability um we know the the uh, the fundamental market benefits of solar and we're here to really help individuals and communities tap into that we're a little bit tired as an organization of the utilities and you know the shareholders of utilities sort of taking all the you know, we want to make sure folks have some 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 skin in the game with this energy transition um and so we want to get you involved in this this push to uh get this bill passed so we'll get into that in a little bit but um you know it 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 really is a uh, a program designed around people um and it's pushed for by industry and and individuals mm -hmm. so uh, is that is that good roger you want to you want to jump yeah. back in here since yeah no i think um that, that, that is great. And just, yeah, kind of, uh, af, you know, affirming why, why we need people to get behind this. Um, you know, what we've seen across the country is that generally the, the utilities will, will kind of push back on, on community solar legislation. Again, despite that, it has passed in, in, in 22 states across the country. Um, however, you know, looking at kind of the, the Midwestern region, like the Heartland region. So, you know, just for example, I'm focused in uh, Indiana, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. In, in those four states, and uh, none have community solar as of yet. So I would say, like passing it in Ohio, it, it'd be it'd be a big deal, and we'd really kind of demonstrate that, hey, you know, in in these heartland states, you know, we can pass this and really move this. And I do think Ohio occupies a bit of a unique space in the landscape because of the the scale of solar manufacturing across you know across the heartland ohio really is the um the, the center of that so passing community solar here it would really have be such a win-win right it's local manufacturing local installers benefits for um communities working class communities benefits for landowners and then certainly activating you know these spaces these distressed sites 
these brownfield sites, these, um, you know, abandoned landmines uh, or, or coal mines that aren't, you know, aren't otherwise being used. Um, but to do this, we need a big coalition of all these forces to kind of get, get this popping. So, hey, that's in part why we're talking with y'all today. We want, you know, we want we want to build a big coalition around around this bill. Next so slide. Wh what's your sense of how it looks for Columbus to pass this? I mean, outside of just hoping they do or you want to say they will. I mean, what's your gut feeling about how how it looks in Columbus, whether can, they're going to pass it or not? I could take this because I, I was around last year. We did introduce this a similar version of this bill last year. Um, it did not have near the buy in support or we had some Republican sponsors, but they were kind of on their way out. In fact, both of them no longer serve in the state legislature. Good people but they no longer serve in the state legislature. This year, we actually have Republican leadership behind it, which I think is really important. Um, we've got commitments from the facility committee chair. Uh, we've got commitments from um, other individuals who uh, gatekeep legislation in the uh, Ohio Assembly. I think passage in the House, I would give it a pretty very high likelihood, which is great. Uh, but then it needs to be introduced in the Senate and it needs to be, you know, transferred over there. So we have, we'll still have to navigate that. We have some support over there, but um, that's going to be the bigger hurdle. So, you know, I, I think this is the year. I think the timing couldn't be any better uh, with these incentives where they're at, um, with this trial of uh, the, the bribery, first energy bribery scandal trial um, kind of coming to its conclusion. Uh, and then just the, the, the rates, have you, I mean, you know, First energy up here, ninety three percent increase in generation. Uh, I, you know, this is a real time to start thinking about alternatives to the system that's really not working for people. People are understanding that we need to just get more options into the mix and get more cheaper options for energy. So I think it really is a good time, better time than the last few years. I am optimistic. I'm very optimistic. So is CCSA, Coalition for Community Solar Access. They're working on bills in five other states, and Ohio is their top state right now because they feel like they have a really good headwind. Mm -hmm. And I'll and I'll, I'll just add to that too, Tom. Like just just from a just from a coalition building perspective, you know, I'm, I'm struck by community solar. It, it's pretty cross cutting. It appeals to a, a lot of different groups. You know, again, it appeals to local manufacturers, local installers you know, working class families, you know, so lower income groups that can't afford solar on their own roof, it, it appeals to them. It activates this, these distressed properties, and, and it really has this rural and urban appeal. Um, and I think it's, it's in part like getting the word out about what community solar is, um, and kind of cutting through the noise on it. Um, and Tristan, I mentioned this earlier, you know, there will be, we, we've seen pushback on these huge scale, you know, utility scale projects, you know, saying that, hey, you know, they kind of mess with the, the rural landscape. Um, and, and again, that's why community solar, I think, has this sweet spot where we're not talking like gigantic scale, you know, or maybe talking like 30 acres and you can kind of work it in to the surrounding environment. Or if you have a big, you know, facility, you can put it on, on that, on the roof of an old industrial site. Um, and there's just kind of, um, I think there's more possibilities with these small, you know, smaller scale projects that still achieve a level of scale that could really impact hundreds and thousands of, of families. Um, so, so I guess to me, you know, as my background is in like coalition building and really working through problems and issues, it, it's exciting to me that the cross-cutting appeal and how we can really get disparate groups together um, around this. And that's been kind of notable. We, so we just launched this, you know, a week and a half ago, and I'm, I'm already seeing the interest from different groups. It's, it's pretty cool um, to see. So if it doesn't pass this year, you stick with it and try it again next year, or is there an earlier availability? Or how long can you go before these the other states of the the twenty two that's already passed? Are you guys in those states that have passed it, so that your yeah. sole United neighbors is a is a going concern? Yeah, I think we um were a part of the coalition that passed community solar in Maryland um, last week, was it? So that passed last week. We were at the governor's signing of the bill. It was really neat. So we so yeah, we're working in other states doing this very same thing. Um, um, but in Ohio, we have a two year cycle. Our state, our state house actually operates through two years, kind of like Congress. So the bill would, you know, I, I'm really optimistic about it passing the house this year and being introduced and getting some hearings in the Senate this year, next year, it'll still be alive. It's the same session, you know, really working it through the Senate, 
And then, you know, if we have to do any work on the governor to make sure that he doesn't bulk, but he shouldn't bulk, it's a pretty benign bill as far as he's concerned. You know, he should sign it without a problem. So, you know, that's really the cadence of things that that I would, the more realistic cadence. Um, the bill sponsors really want to move quickly and they, they feel optimistic about getting it all done this year. Uh, that's great. We want our bill sponsors to be optimistic about uh, things like that. So um, again, I, I think everything points to things are working in our direction. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Well, it seems as though if people are willing to put up the, the uh, panel arrays, what would be the downside? What, how could anybody argue against it in Columbus? What would be their argument? Yeah. So the biggest argument, and Roger touched on this. Um, well, well, first off, utilities can't control it and own it. So they, they have a problem with it. And they um, have had a lot of influence in our state capital. So they lobby the against all of this stuff. They lobby against it. However, this is sort of something that isn't a high, it doesn't seem to be a super high priority to the utilities. Um, they have other fights going on right now, and they're kind of a little bit down for the punch, down, you know, down for the count rather. Um, uh -huh. And it's, it's, it's again, and creates a little bit of an opportunity. Whereas a few years ago, they were, you know, stamping out things like this. Right now, they've um, voiced some concern, but the opposition is pretty weak. We, we feel, again, this is, we've got a little bit of a window here. Um, but the, the, the arguments they use might be something like, you know, do you really want ugly solar panels on your farmland or something like that? Yeah. And our rebuttal is pretty simple. It's like, no, you're talking, you know, that's your, you, that's your argument for utility scale, giant solar projects that take up, you know, thousands of acres of land. We're talking about small solar arrays, a couple acres here and there, we're talking about land like brown fields that can't be, so you, we, they don't have much of a leg to stand on, you know, it, it, they'll use whatever arguments are most handy um, because, you know, this allows for ownership other than themselves um, and, and they'd rather just own everything. Um, so, you know, again, our opposition has been relatively light up to this point and we're hoping it stays that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me too. I, I mean, I think all of this stuff should be just fine to do. I don't see a downside. Mm -hmm. You're willing to put private, the money in. Right? It's all private land. This is these are private agreements between individuals and, you know, their customers. Um, just like any other business, I don't understand why we can't just let uh, farmers or, or landowners or my, former mine owners decide what to do with their land, make deals with businesses and people around the state. And, and sell that energy like at market rate, basically. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Roger. I'm sorry. I know. Um, yeah. So, so we, yeah, we talked about this a little bit, you know, what, what does this mean to you, the, the community solar bill? Uh, maybe one thing we didn't uh, touch on is that, you know, with, uh, with these community solar projects, you know, as, as part of the deal that they would kind of up, they would update the, the grid. So the electrical grid, you know, when, when these community solar projects are installed, it would be up to the uh, developer to kind of make sure that the, that the grid is, is up to code and, and functioning as such. Um, the rest of this we've kind of touched on. So yeah, uh, next slide. Um, so, so currently, there's already projects that are lined up. So, I mean, there's very strong interest, you know, across the state in, in developing these community solar projects. So, in about uh, 44 out of uh, Ohio's 88 counties, we have um, projects lined up. Um, and, and you know, as we just highlight here, that you know, these projects will help to develop, you know, the, the local tax base, and I think particularly in, in rural areas where. We want to expand the, the tax base. The, these projects are, are, are very relevant, um, and and again, just going back to the coalition building aspect, we we want you know we want to highlight that hey, this is going to benefit rural and urban areas. You know, it's going to benefit the tax base. It, it's really going to you know provide a boost to to diverse communities across our state. Um, next slide. Yeah, and then. You know, I think that's the main kind of, you know, information sharing part of the presentation. Um, we, you know, we kind of maybe want to just get into maybe y'all any, any, you know, stories or reflections from y'all. If you've um, thought about going solar yourselves, if this notion of community solar, like, you know, if it did pass in Ohio, you know, would y'all be interested in, you know, buying solar energy, purchasing it from a community solar array? 
just kind of curious where y'all are at um, on that. And then also just say like any feedback that y'all have. So basically, you know, we just keeping it real with y'all. We're trying to build a big, bold coalition around this issue. And I'm just curious, like what resonated with you? What questions did you have? Like, are you excited about it? Um, you know, and any feedback would be great. Uh, okay. So say, for example, you mentioned a, like a church and uh, we have several churches around here with gigantic roofs. And if they put a ray and then this thing passed uh, and they could sell that, do you pay, um, would you pay the church a fee for the electricity that you're going to get? Or is it included in your regular first energy electric bill? How, how does that, yeah, I, I mean, how do you know you're saving money if you're paying two different sources? Yeah, it's a good question. Again, um, you'll uh, how our utility bills look to are really confusing sometimes. But you would essentially be signing up and purchasing, and you just like your the latter thing. You'd be seeing it uh, on your bill as a line item. Some of us here may have no pack. You know how you see no pack on your bill, and you see the rate for no pack, right? It'll be similar. You have no pack. You'll have the rate for no pack, and then you'll have you know church community solar project, a rate for church community solar. And it'll have probably a fixed amount of solar you're buying, a fixed amount of kilowatt hours you're buying, and it'll have the amount of you know the the price for that energy on the bill. Um, and then and then that'll just be factored in, and that price should be um, again the whole point of this bill. And we'll, we'll, the bill has this mechanism built in to look back on it to make sure it's saving people money. Uh, should be less than whatever the standard service offer is for that that area or whatever you're paying from your utility. So that so the only thing you pay is your utility bill. Yep. And it your community solar a, is folded into your regular electric bill. That's exactly right. Yep. Okay. And I guess if you if you compare what you paid last year at this time to what you're paying this year with the church community solar, you'll see that you're saving five dollars, twenty dollars, a hundred, whatever, right? Yep. And you, you know, that's something we'll probably end up helping people with. Something our organization does will help sort of design some of these programs, will help sort of people understand their bill a little bit better. Um, and we'll be able to show you like, here's what you pay. Here's what a normal person consuming the amount of energy you consume pays. Here's what you're paying with community solar. And it'll be a little less. It should be a little bit less. And people can choose how much they subscribe to, too. So the more you subscribe to, the more opportunity you have to subscribe to more solar, the more you'll be able to save. Okay, so say, for example, this passes. Once it's passed, can I go to the church and tell them to do this? Yeah. And yeah. and can I be the one to put together the neighborhood that's going to pay? Yeah. For example, yeah. just to spearhead it? Because if they haven't seen your wonderful presentation and met both of you great guys... They may not be willing to or know anything about it. Yeah, yeah, no. There's that. There's people that, that we can connect you with too, who actually do the solar installation work and the development work. Um, depending on what kind of ownership model too you want to look at, there's groups out there willing to finance those kind of projects. Um, obviously, that financing would be built into your uh, subscription model, so you're you're, you're paying your your financed solar yeah. with. The, the subscription money, or you can just pool your money as an, like as a, as a church or as individuals, like what Roger is talking about community owned solar. So everybody pitches in a thousand dollars and you all own that array. And then you pretty much all get a dividend for the, the, the money that you make off of the array from selling that solar energy to your community. So the first energy or whoever the energy company is, is obligated to buy the power from you that you generate from your array. They're obligated to facilitate the um, subscription model. The individuals that subscribe are going to buy the power. Uh, and then whatever's left over, I think it either, it goes to like a bulk rate. It's, there's a lot of, there's a high incentive for that project to be subscribed to hundred percent because anything that you, that you don't subscribe on that project is going to go, is going to be sold back to the grid at a discount. So, you, you know, you want to make sure you have enough subscribers to cover your, um, you know, the full amount of energy you're producing. Mm -hmm. I think in a lot of cases, we're going to see businesses um, stepping up and really buying the bulk of that energy because they love fixing their costs. And this is like, it, it, you're fixing your costs for whatever the term you're signing up to. If it's three years, four years, in some cases, you'll have 20-year contracts um, for, with businesses with solar arrays. 
and it's going to fix their cost for that period of time for that energy they're they're buying. They'd much rather do that than leave it to the market um, and and the volatility. So you'll see big businesses you buying up a lot of maybe 50, 60 percent of some of that solar, but then there'll, there'll be hundreds of individuals buying up the the other fifty or forty percent. Mm -hmm. And and Tom, to to your question too, it's, so it's almost like you know looking ahead after we pass this bill and 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 we're moving in that direction. You know, a lot of the work then, at least for up for Solar United neighbors, for us, like you know, we're going to want to make sure that hey, working families get access to, to to this solar energy. So hey, how can we make sure we're in neighborhoods, you know, on the east side of Cleveland? making sure families are aware of this and, and trying to navigate the process for them. Make, and again, making sure that the people really have access to it. And that'll take work. That'll take organizing. Yeah. You know, that we're going to try to do. Um, I'll also say that, you know, for whether it's a church or a landowner um, and, and getting an actual community solar project on the land that someone owns, um, I do think that if it, an easier route is leasing out that land. So if you lease your land to a developer and, and to, to a host, that's gonna that, that that's an easier way you know to 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 set up that project, um, and and for example, what we've seen in other states is if there's a rural landowner, they can lease their land to a developer and to a host to kind of manage the project. But then that landowner, what you can do is kind of negotiate like a community benefits type agreement. So what do you want to see? What benefits do you want to make sure that you're seeing you know out of this land that you're leasing for this solar project? And so if it's a church and you're leasing it, you might want to say, hey, we want to make sure that 40% of, of those who buy in are members of our church. Or we want to say, hey, you know, of this project, you know, we want to make sure that 10% are low-income individuals that could, you know, buy into this project. So you get into those kind of nuances. And to me, it's that that's that cool, like, participatory stuff. You could really, you know, make these projects beneficial to, to working families. Uh -huh. Sounds good. Well, let's... Um... Let's all uh, think good thoughts about getting that thing passed. Hey, hey. Absolutely. And um, you fellas did a great job telling us about it. And uh, I'll put this up on YouTube. I bet you it gets, I bet you it gets a thousand hits in a few days. All right. Just, just because solar is such an up and coming thing. I'm not sure if people are aware of this. Um, the uh the mode of community solar they think they they have to they like mortgage their future by putting panels on the roof and and your break even point is 17 years away mm -hmm. um whereas this sounds like you could benefit as soon as you sign up because you're sharing that burden so let's hope for the best and uh that everybody like you said Roger so that everybody that that needs it should be on this and people that could benefit from it should be on it too. Mm -hmm. It's great. So um, I think that'll wrap it up for us today. We thank Jeff and Scott and Chris and Trina and Mike was here earlier and Ray was even earlier. And Ray was the reason we got Roger and Tristan today. So thanks so much, men. Tristan Rader, Roger Sykes. It's been great. Yes. And, and and just to um, so next steps and and the plug so so tomorrow evening um, Wednesday May thirty first at six thirty p.m. we're going to have a big coalition town hall and again this is folks like yourselves that we're really trying to build a coalition around this bill uh, the link is in the the chat here Tom and I'm okay. on the YouTube channel Tom yeah. these links could maybe be included there's also a petition included in the chat so that sure will show that you support it but it'll also link you to campaign updates. And then our contact information is in the chat. Be in touch anytime. Like I said, I'm in Cleveland, but we're working across the state. I'm always down to talk or grab a coffee or, you know. And your website address is? SolarUnitedNeighbors.org. And you might want to do backslash Ohio. SolarUnitedNeighbors with an S. Dot org. Backslash. SolarUnitedNeighbors.org. It's slash when it's a URL. It's a backslash if it's a if it's a yeah, Windows. I've been saying that wrong for thirty years, probably. So thank you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Thanks so much, and uh, all of you out there in YouTube land, thanks so much for watching it to the end. This was great. We were so uh, privileged and honored to have Roger and Tristan here explaining solar energy. So we'll talk to you next Tuesday morning right here at the Network Breakfast. This is Tom Basie for uh, Jeff, Scott, Chris. 
Roger, Tristan, Trina, Mike, and Ray. Till next Tuesday morning. Thank you so much. Adios. Thanks for having us. Good to meet y'all.